When I was about 10 or so, and spending the summer with my grandparents in Poland, I used to go to our neighbor's house, who always had two or three litters of kittens in their backyard. Me, being a little kid, I used to spend hours there playing with them and would go every day, or even twice a day. There was a house directly across my neighbor's house in which a really old lady lived. It was obvious that she had some kind of mental illness, as she would talk to herself and sit alone all day on her porch chain-smoking cigarettes. One day, when I was making my way to our neighbor's house, I saw she was standing up to her gate. When she saw me, she started making a conversation. Me, not trying to be rude, I walked over to the gate and joined in the conversation she was trying to have with me. A few minutes passed of her asking questions of where I'm from, I'm an American, and how life is in America. I answer politely and try to get on with my mission to pet those kittens. Just as I excuse myself, she invites me inside. My ten-year-old self knowing to respect elders and not trying to be rude agrees to go in and continue our innocent chat. When I walked up the stairs to her front door, I started to get this putrid stench of rotting meat. I kind of hesitated to walk in, but I did agree anyways. When I walked into her home, all I could see was piles and piles of clothes, dishes, and blankets. I could barely see from room to room as these piles were almost as high as the ceiling. We somehow make it to her kitchen, and we sit down. The view outside her window looking into her backyard was so green but overgrown and neglected. We start up our conversation again, and she begins with talking about her life story. What she was explaining to me about her life didn't really make sense, as she would forget what she would say every few seconds and have to repeat it. After about half an hour of her trying to explain everything, she finally brings up that her husband died during World War II and that she was a single mother for most of her life, until her son committed suicide by setting himself on fire. As a ten-year-old, this saddened me, but also scared me, and the thought of being burned alive still gives me the shivers to this day. What she did next gave me many sleepless nights as a child and I cannot seem to forget about it. She stands up and quickly shuffles into the next room. She brings two medium-sized vases. She then tells me that this is her husband and her son. I was shocked and saddened, but also happy that she had their ashes to remember them by. The happiness quickly turned into pure terror as she lifted the lid off her son's ashes and dipped her fingers in the ash and then stuck her ash-dipped finger into her mouth and swallowed. I was terrified and quickly made up an excuse that I had to go and my grandparents were expecting me. As I literally left crying, all I could think of was, why would she do such a thing? Eating her son's remains? As soon as I got home, I collapsed into my grandmother's arms and sobbed. I told her what had happened, and she warned me to never go over there again. From that day on, my grandpa always walked me to our neighbor's house to play with the kittens. The lady who ate her son's ashes recently passed. She lived to be over a hundred, and according to our neighbor, who took care of her for the last days of her life, she'd been suffering from mental disorders for her entire life. In the end, I feel sorry for that old lady and hope her soul was resting peacefully. But as a kid, that was definitely one of the scariest moments I have ever experienced. So lately, I've been remembering a lot of things that happened when I was younger, and I want to get it out somehow. But due to these two stories being on the shorter side, this will be a sort of two-in-one post. However, if any of you are interested, I plan on making a longer post about a separate story sometime after this. Maybe some others too, if I can remember. Anyways, on to the stories. 
The first one took place when I was about 10 or 11, and my mother had gotten done with the long day of shopping at a few grocery stores, but we were tired as we didn't have a car at this time, so our trips revolved a lot around walking and taking the city bus route, but we managed. We just wanted to get home. We were in a better mood once we got to the bus station that would take us the way home, but there were a few people there. One of the guys stepped up to us and said, Hi, and smiled in this really strange, creepy way. It was like he scrunched his nose up while he did it and tilted his head toward his shoulders like a dog does when they hear a strange noise, and he did this really weird body movement. We said hello back, and he started talking to us. Well, my mom. He said, You don't deserve to be out in this cold. You should be somewhere safe and warm. And just sort of creepily moved in on us. He was kind of hitting on my mom with things like, Let me protect you, and I'm a lover, baby, not a fighter. Keep in mind, my mom was married, and in no way indicated she wanted anything to do with that man in that way. The creepy behavior kept on going until the bus pulled up and we got on, and noticed he did too. The whole ride, he was dead eyes staring at us. The bus stopped at our stop. The man wasn't ready for the halt, so he got jerked along with the bus, and something of his fell and rolled underneath his seat. He got off the seat to look for it, and me and my mom took the opportunity to grab our stuff and rushed out of the bus. As we looked back while the bus was driving away, he was staring at us through the window, furiously, with both his hands up against it, and the stare made my ten-year-old self nearly piss myself. But the bus pulled away, and we shook it off and just went home. We never saw this dude again. Now, as for the second story, it's not exactly mine, and it was more of a recurring chain of events. My mom would go to the subway, which was in a bit of a small lot across from this Walmart. It was like a straight line of establishments. It went in the order of Little Caesars, Subway, some salon thing, Radio Shack, GameStop, what used to be a Payless shoe store. But anyway, my father loved Subway and always asked for her to go get it so she would. And when she'd come back home, she would tell us some story about how one of the male workers there had said some weird things to her or flirted with her. We were all always kind of grossed out by this, but we passed it off, as it didn't really matter anyway. But it got progressively worse. He'd start saying things like, Hi, babe, when she walked in. Even the other coworkers were taking notice and giving their creepy coworker weird looks, according to my mom. So one day, she wanted me and my little brother to come with, as an attempt to get him to stop and back off. By this time, I'm pretty sure I was 12. And when the creepy worker sees us, he starts getting upset and uncomfortable and says, You never told me you had kids. Why wouldn't you tell me that? He said in a sad, somber voice. And he just kind of asked my mother what she would like and continued making the sandwiches, while keeping an angry yet sad look on his face the whole time. He practically tossed the sandwiches at us, and for whatever reason, my mother never saw him again. But I guess in the end, her idea of bringing me and my brother worked. Still, for the life of me, I'll never understand people like that. This happened when I was around 15. I live out in the country and close to a lake, so I would always ride down there on my bike with my cousin. Well, one day, I decided to walk down but met up with my cousin who wanted to ride bikes, so I started walking back home. My cousin was riding her bike in front of me. As I was walking, an SUV pulled up beside me. It was an older man, maybe in his early 50s. He stopped and asked me if I needed a ride. I told him no, and I also told him that I did not live so far away. He drove down the road and turned around and started to stop by me again. At this point I'm scared, because my mother always told me not to talk to strangers. I'm thinking he came back because I talked to him instead of just ignoring him. He once again asked me if I was sure I did not need a ride. I once again told him no and that I was fine. He drove down the road again and turned around. I yelled to my cousin to turn around and get home 
as fast as she can. She does not question me, so she must have heard the panic in my voice. She and me start running home as fast as we can. I don't remember getting home. I only remember running inside to my mom crying. I told her what happened, and my brother immediately grabs a bat and runs down the driveway to find the man. My mom takes me to the police station to make a report. After I gave a sketch artist my description, we heard nothing for a few weeks, until a girl in the next city told cops some guy tried to pick her up, and her description matched mine. They finally found the guy who said he was going on to offer us some drugs. After this, I never walked alone again. I recently moved to a new part of town and have been enjoying the many walking trails nearby. I prefer walking in the evening when it cools off and have been walking for close to two hours every night after sunset but before midnight. Even though I'm a smaller woman, I've never been very afraid of doing things alone or being out past dark alone. I have a strong rebellious and stubborn streak, so I guess I've always enjoyed proving wrong all the voices that gasp in horror and go, oh, but it's not safe. Interestingly enough, the only time I've truly felt a bit creeped out in all the miles and hours I've walked over the last few weeks was the night that this happened. I'm normally pretty impulsive with routes and go where the spirits lead me, so I end up just wandering and playing with taking pictures of whatever catches my interest. I was walking along, and a man passed me on the path going the opposite way. This was in the first half of my walk, and a spot that sort of acts as the hub depending which route I feel like taking for that night. So this guy passes me, and I feel sleezed out. You know the feeling, where they sort of eye-rape you and openly leer. But he kept going one way and I kept going the other, and did my thing. But a good while later, I mean at least 30 minutes if not an hour, when I looped back through that main hub area, there he was sitting on a bench with his backpack and phone in hand. But it looked like he was maybe legitimately waiting, resting, or trying to rent a scooter, so I kept walking a bit and then stopped to take some pics of the natural scenery so I could naturally kind of see if he was still there. And he was sitting there and didn't seem to be fixating on me or following, so I kept going and somewhat shrugged it off. But something didn't feel right. I could sense I was being watched, but kept telling myself I had probably just had a bit too much weed before leaving the house. Still, I had been high the other nights too and never felt like this. So I kept going, but kept reaching up and pausing my earbuds and listening for any extra sets of footsteps, watching for any extra shadows, and I'm always aware of my surroundings, with CPTSD, how can you not be, am I right? And something was off tonight even if I couldn't immediately define it. I had walked about a quarter mile from where I last saw the guy when it happened. I sensed someone rapidly moving up behind me. I paused my music and glanced back and immediately recognized him. All I could think was just thinking, what the actual hell? So here's what transpired. C is the creep and M is me. C, running up, oh my god, are you okay? M. Uh, yes? What are you talking about? Mentally thinking over my last moves, and yeah, I had been acting relatively normal for a human. See? Uh, well, I saw you walking around earlier, you know, and just... I have food. Do you need food? I want to make sure you're okay. Me? Giving him the full-on, are you kidding me stare? Dude, I don't know what your issue is, but I'm just out trying to enjoy the evening and get some exercise. See? Oh, okay, so do you have a phone number? M, deliberately looking down at my phone in hand and back at him with a curt, dry, no. See? Okay, I just thought I could walk with you. Hey, am, am I bothering you? I'm just trying to keep you safe. Me, literally rolling my eyes. Well, it kind of looks like you decided to wait for me and then follow me, and I'm just not real keen on how that looks, you know? See? Realizing I'm not playing his games and starts squirming. Well, 
but I just happened to notice you and wanted to look out for you. Hey, do you smoke weed? Me, dripping with attitude now. I mean, yeah, of course, but then gave him a look that said, but not with you, so don't even think about it. See? Okay, well, then can I walk with you? Let me walk with you. Me? I had been slowly continuing my walk, and now stopped and turned fully towards him. What the F? No, I sure as hell prefer you don't. Him? Wait, what did you say? Me? I said I sure as F prefer that you don't join me, because if you try to, we're gonna have a problem. I'm out here trying to enjoy my walk, you know, alone, how I set out. I was enjoying it, so tell me which way you're going, please, because we are not walking together. See? Dramatically feigning shock to my response. Okay, fine, I'm not actually going this way. I just did to check on you. Did he seriously admit to just stalking me? What an idiot. Me, with an exasperated sigh. Look man, I've been trying to be nice, but I'm about to tell you to F off. Do you understand? And I have a tone almost nobody ever hears, but boy is it actually scary when I do use it. And because it's rarely used, it's all the more scathing and forceful when I do it. See, feigning further shock at my response. But you can't tell me to F off when I'm trying to be a gentleman. Me, face now full of an are you kidding me? Seriously? What the actual f is wrong with you? See, crossing the street and turning around. Fine, but I was just trying to help you and keep you safe. Me, completely done and calling after him. I didn't need your help. I do just fine keeping myself safe, and furthermore, it is not being a quote-unquote gentleman when the lady not only doesn't need any help, but also did not want or ask for it. So just go F off now. I turned and walked away, glancing back a couple times to be sure he wasn't still following and was still walking away, but otherwise pushed my shoulders back and literally tossed my hair back too, after a block or so of angry muttering and curses thrown his way. I turned my music back on and went on like nothing happened, but that you can't tell me to F off I'm trying to be a gentleman, oh my sweet baby Jesus bless this creepy little nice guy's stalker heart. I had to deliver boxes of food for my job. I was calling clients to ask if they wanted a box. I called a client's brother because he was the main contact. He told me yes, the client would like the food and that the client has been staying at his house for a while now, so I should deliver it there. He gave me the address, and I was on my way. The house was brown, modern looking, had long windows. The windows were long enough that I saw the full bodies of naked mannequin statues in the window from head to toe. The sight of these mannequins gave me the absolute creeps. I became super on edge and put my keys between my knuckles. I walked onto the porch, to the door, and rang the doorbell. I stepped back, a much further distance than what I normally would, because I had a bad feeling that something was about to happen. A man with a sunken-in face like a C-shape opened the door. Heavy set and unkempt, he wore baggy clothes and had an unshaven face, neck beard and all. His appearance was unsettling. As soon as I saw his face, I knew my gut feeling was right. Trying to remain friendly, I said, Hi, I have a box of food from insert company name here for insert client name here. And he said, that's me. I repeated what I said all the while trying to hand him the box. His arms did not leave his sides. They didn't even move an inch. He said, oh, you're from company name? Uh, well, come inside, I have something to show you. In an extremely creepy way. He stepped outside across the porch to where I was standing. I said, well, here you go, and he stood there saying, no, come inside. He wouldn't stop saying it, so I screamed, no, and put the box on the ground, ran to my car, and drove away as fast as I could. As I was driving away, I saw him standing on the porch closer to my car than he was before, like he was trying to follow me, but slowly. I reported him, and my boss called me to say, I even wonder if that was the brother who lured you in from the phone call. (laughs) 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this collection of terrifying encounter stories. The third story in this video was actually narrated by MJS Horror. Uh, MJS Horror is a smaller channel on YouTube here, uh, and I mean, I'm not a big channel by any means, but um, he reached out to me and wanted to collab, so I said, why not? And so he sent me his narration. <laughs> Uh, I'll go ahead and link to him in the description. Please do check him out. He's a nice guy. He's very supportive of the community. He likes to retweet everyone's stuff, so... Uh, overall, just a decent person. You know, go ahead and check him out. He's still getting his bearings on this, but I have a feeling he'll be much larger uh, come this time next year, if he keeps it up, so... Alright, friends, if you did enjoy this content and would like more content like this, or content that is so vastly different, it's like... Comparing apple juice to Amazon boxes... My comparisons are becoming crap. Um, I'm just, I'm comparing things that are around me at this point. I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. Anyway, go ahead and please consider joining the Nevermore by hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. Doing so makes you part of the Nevermore. You can do things to support the Nevermore, such as joining me on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, or sending me a story in the link below, or you can support the channel further by helping me out on Coffee or Patreon. My Patreons all get their names at the end of my videos, as you can see on the screen probably either now or a couple seconds ago. And they are genuinely good people, so thank you to all of them, and thank you to all of you for listening to this point. I just want to say I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic day. Uh, see you on the next video. But until then, much love and sleep well.